Mm. I think I'm done playing with Load Runner. I think I want to take apart my Apple IIc. Let's uh, let's see what we got here. So first of all, let's uh, disconnect my smart drive and my monitor. Unplug the power. Probably should have done that first. And the mouse. So this Apple IIc I got as a uh, as a rescue out of a trash bin. So when I got it, it had no screws at all. But now it has some, but they're not all original at all. So let's uh, move these case screws, which are now wood screws. But you know, whatever, it works. Usually there's two more screws right right there and right there. But I only had four screws that matched. And these held together pretty well. Next there's these four screws right here. Which hold the, the floppy drive in place. And these I'm just using machine screws. I don't remember exactly what what spec they are or anything like that. Here we go. So, the handle. Okay, so this is a what I call a backpack. It uh, hooks on using the fins there into that slot and because it's got this little hook shape it goes in and then slides down a little it stays locked in place this is for my color black and white mod which I will show you later on in this video so there's a latch in the front I don't know if this is the right way to take it apart, but it's the way I do it sometimes. Um, this panel here snaps in. There are some uh, some tabs which you can see there. There, there's two in here, one over here, and then there's a tab here and a tab here, which usually clip into the case itself. So let's take out the keyboard first. Just held in with a ribbon cable. Set that up there. And uh, the floppy drive is right here. It's again just a tiny 20 piece, uh, 20 position ribbon cable. And here's the floppy drive. I've also uh, I've replaced the spring in this because it wasn't working properly. I actually pulled the spring for that out of out of this drive, which is from a 1541. It's broken, but was able to reuse parts. If you notice, it's an Alps drive, and hey, it looks pretty similar. Yeah, same mechanism. So here's the inside of my Apple IIc. Let's uh, bring the camera in a little closer. There we go. You can see everything here. Um, actually, you know what, let's do it this way. Bring it up and then zoom out. So I'm just going to pull off the power brick just for the fun of it. I think these are replacement screws too. I might be wrong on that though. It's been a while. I actually got this about 15 years ago and it was not functional. And things were plugged in. Well, the floppy drive was plugged in wrong. Power supply. But it turns out that what was wrong with that was the, uh, well, the floppy drive wasn't plugged in right. And um, there were some 
ram trips over here that were just totally, totally messed up. Get some more colorful light on us. So yeah, I had to replace some of these, which I did um, only after I got the ROM 4X, which had better diagnostics than the 255 ROM that was in there. Um, so yeah, I had to replace a bunch of ROMs. This one, when I put it in, oh, any ones that are in sockets, I replaced. So I won't put one right through to the board just in case. But this one was really close to the floppy drive, so I just put a little bit of uh, PVC um, electrical tape on it. And then I finally refound one of these donuts, these metal donuts that bridge the shielding from the board to the floppy drive. So I finally have both of those again. Then this was just a little spacer that I put in because I had socketed the IWM. It was originally mounted right to the board, but I think due to messing around with the floppy drive, I burned it out. So this one's actually pulled out of a Mac SE, um, which is surprising that the two systems are that similar. Unsurprising to me anyway. Um, okay, so a couple things I've done in here. First of all, I put in, see, I have this, this two pin connector, which goes to this little backpack. And I had another backpack that went to this, well, this one to another backpack. And it basically selected between the two different ROM images that are on here. There's a 255 ROM image, which is what this machine came stock with and the ROM 4X, which I found that I never took it off of ROM 4X. So I just left the jumper in and was like, eh, forget it, it's fine. Um, and when I did that, I had to jumper, solder this W2 link right there. So the color, the color black and white switch. I was looking at the, um, the schematic for the Laser 128, which is a clone of basically sort of this board, sort of the Apple IIc, but it has a black and white color switch. And I was like, I want to get that because on this tiny monitor, especially in 80 column mode, you can't really read it if it's in color mode. So you want it to be black and white, excuse me. So I was looking around on the laser schematics, and but I didn't see exactly what I was looking for there. And then I looked at the Apple IIc schematics and couldn't really find anything that matched except for one line coming out of the IOU here. And I think it was like CLR gen, color gen. I think that's the line that it was. Um, regardless here, you can see which pin it is on the IOU. So I basically did was I I lifted this pin out so it's actually not going through the board. Um, and then rather than tap into one of the traces over here, one of the vias, um, I actually found that it came out in this via right here. So the two, these two are actually, well, the socket underneath there connects to there. So I was like, oh, you know what? If I just put, well, actually what I tried doing at first was I tried, there was like two or three other pins that I thought might work for disabling color um, or the color generation. Um, I tried a few other ones, didn't happen, but I found that if this one, if I lifted it, no color burst was, was sent on the output video. So that seemed to be the right place. And then I tried jumpering it, color came back. So then I found this via over here, right next to the IWM, right, right in this little video section here. Um, and then I soldered up the wire, which goes to the two connections on the switch. So now this switch, if it's off, I get, uh, I think, well, I don't remember which way it works, but one way I get color, the other way I don't. So yeah. That's pretty much the extent of the modifications I've made on this, and because I pulled it out of a garbage pile, anything I do to it is like, um, like gravy, you know? I mean, it's not like it's, 
near and dear to me from when I was growing up. Um, I have no real sentimental attachment to this thing, so I'm always willing to try different stuff on it. Um, yeah. Oh, the other thing is that I'm missing this L2 right here, this hue adjustment. The coil apparently broke at some point, so there's actually nothing there right now. So the colors coming out of this thing are a little... The, the hue is way off. But if you can adjust it on your monitor, it's fine. You can compensate for it. But I'd love to get a new one of those coils, but I just... I can't find any information. I can't find a bill of materials for the, the 2C. Found it for, like, the 2E, but it has a different setup, so it doesn't have that. The 2C Plus has it, but again, it just is labeled as L2 in the schematics. There's no no information about it, about uh, the range or the, the value for it. So if anybody knows, I'd love to know so I can replace it to get it back to normal. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, that's my Apple IIc. Um, it runs great. Uh, the keyboard surprisingly still feels really good. I still have the rubber membrane in there. Um, it's, it's not bursty or anything, but it has, has a good feel to it. It's not horrible. And the floppy drive surprisingly works great. Oh, I think I probably cleaned the head on it at one point. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great little machine. It's, uh, well, I have a 2E, but I ended up pulling most of these ROM chips out of that. And I swapped in a couple other parts to try to get this working. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, hope you all have a great day. And uh, enjoy. Uh, what do they say? Apple II C for or, or Apple II forever? Whatever. Bye. Have a great one.